Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick, and welcome to this episode of the St. Jude Thaddeus Story. In today's episode, we're going to talk about the three sacred relics associated with St. Jude Thaddeus. The first is the letter of King Abgar to Jesus and the response. If you're interested in this story, we did a film, my brother Josiah and I did a film uh, called St. Jude Thaddeus and the Legend of the Shroud. And we also have the docudrama edition, which I'm trying to put out on these videos. And I have the book, the St. Jude Thaddeus storybook and the uh, accompanying volume, if you will, uh, is St. Jude Thaddeus and Legend of the Shroud book. So the story is, and this is corroborated by uh, certain scriptures in the Bible, it mentions how that the fame of Jesus spread across all of Syria in the Gospel of Matthew. And so an Assyrian king named Abgar heard of the miraculous power of Jesus Christ to heal. So he sent a message to Jesus asking for him to come and heal him. According to the legend, the message was received shortly before the Passion. So Jesus sent a response saying that the time had not yet come. Uh, his destiny had to, was to be fulfilled, but he would uh, send a disciple, one of his apostles, to go and pray for this king and heal him and bring life to him and his people. So Eusebius, the father of church history, found records of the correspondence between Jesus and uh, King Abgar and Jesus' verbal response in the city archives of Edessa. And of course, if you're looking at this series on our channel, uh, I have previous episodes where I talk about the story of the legend of King Abgar. So that's the one relic, the relic of the letter of Jesus and his response. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the Muslims invaded and uh, they took over the city of Edessa and uh, the relics that were there are lost. So we don't have a copy of the letter anymore. But uh, Azuria, the pilgrim, riding around the year, the year 380, uh, she also saw the letter. So Eusebius, the father of church history, he saw the letter, which was in Aramaic, and he translated uh, for his book, the, the Church History of Eusebius, written around the year 325, 381. Azuria, the pilgrim, uh, she went to Edessa, and she also saw the letter is brought out to her by the Bishop of Edessa. And like I said, there's a previous episode where we, ex we explore that story. Uh, actually, that's, uh, Isuria is the first uh, woman who to have written a book that we still have today. And uh, it, that was her experience where she actually went to Edessa. She's writing the first person and saw this uh, sacred relic. The second sacred relic is the holy image of Edessa. And some people associate this with the Shroud of Turin. So in Edessa, they claimed that there was a, uh, a portrait of Jesus. That's how it's originally described, I believe, in um, the Doctrine of Adai. Uh, it's described as a, uh, or other accounts, as a portrait that Henan, one of the uh, envoys sent by King Abgar, saw Jesus and created a picture of what Jesus looked like for the king. That's, that's the story. Uh, but later, uh, we have in the, uh, uh, the Acts of the Apostle Mari, who is the disciple of St. Jude Thaddeus, that this image, that, that wasn't correct, this image was a supernatural image, not created by the hand of man. And uh, uh, we had the idea that, that Jesus pressed a cloth against his face, and miraculously the image of his face appeared on this, on this uh, relic. So some people said, well, it was very, actually, it's a very um, famous sacred relic in, in antiquity. And even to this day, even though the holy image of Edessa has been lost, there are certain replicas that have survived. And some people believe that the image, which we call the Shroud of, Shroud of Turin, that the Shroud of Turin is actually uh, the same thing as the holy image of Edessa. And the theory is that when St. Jude Thaddeus appeared before the king, he brought with him a gift, the Shroud of Jesus, which he folded, which he gave to him, but it was folded and displayed as a portrait. So that's people who are convinced of the authenticity of the Shroud. Uh, it's like, well, if this is the real burial cloth of Jesus, then, then how did it survive? And the theory is that it was discovered in the empty tomb. It's described as in, in the Bible. Uh, the Shroud is. And so the idea is that uh, perhaps St. Jude Thaddeus took it to Edessa, where this famous image of Jesus was displayed for centuries. Uh, and then it was smuggled out during the Crusades and eventually made its way to Turin, Italy. That's uh, a theory that people have proposed. The other sacred relic associated with St. Jude Thaddeus is the, uh, 
the spear of destiny, the spear of Longinus, the spear that pierced the side of Jesus Christ. So you know the story, Jesus is on the cross, and uh, the Roman soldiers decide uh, to honor Jewish tradition. It's a holy day, and according to the law of Moses, bodies were not supposed to be uh, left hanging uh, overnight. Uh, when people are executed, they're not supposed to be displaying the corpses overnight. So Jewish law, law of Torah, the Torah, the law of Moses said that uh, after someone is executed, uh, their their bodies be removed before the sun sets. That's Jewish custom and tradition. Uh, now Roman law, you know, people would stay on the cross, and sometimes people could survive two or three days on the cross. Uh, but in deference to Jewish custom for the Passover, the soldiers broke the, the legs, uh, which induces a state of shock and hastens death. So they went to Jesus to uh, uh, to break his legs, but the prophecy said that none of his bones would be broken, and uh, he'd already been dead for some time. To, so to confirm his death, they stabbed him in the side, and according to Gospel of John, blood and water flowed out of the wound. Uh, so the story is that Longinus, the soldier that pierced his side, preserved this relic. So among the Georgian Christians, the Armenians, uh, they have this this relic that they believe that St. Jude Thaddeus brought them when he's evangelizing the, the Mesopotamia, that he brought the uh, with him when he converted the Assyrians, the Armenians, the Georgians, and other peoples of the East. He brought also not just the, the not only have the letter associated with the story of St. Jude Thaddeus, uh, you have the holy image of Edessa, which is, when you see a, uh, a, a picture of, of St. Jude Thaddeus, he's shown holding the holy image of, of Edessa. That's the legend of St. Jude Thaddeus you see there. And lastly, among the Eastern Christians, you have this belief that uh, the Spear of Destiny, uh, as it's called, was brought to the Eastern peoples by St. Jude Thaddeus. So, pray for me as I continue this project. Um, I want to have all this video edited and completed, and I think I can do it. I think I got a lot of good footage. Uh, but I need, I need the time and resources to edit it together. And what I would also like to do is I like to have it dubbed into Spanish to have a Spanish version of, uh, of St. Jude Thaddeus, the docudrama, and the, uh, the documentary film. Uh, so we can put this information. One of the challenges out there, of course, is uh, YouTube. YouTube is a censorship platform. So uh, my, my videos here aren't going to get a lot of circulation unless something's done about it. And uh, we've, <laughs> we've discovered that the federal government uh, has been involved in censorship. So if you're pro-life, if you're conservative, if you have traditional American and conservative values, then the FBI is going to mark your, your content, uh, your online social media content, for censorship. Uh, there is a legal case going on right now. I think it's the state of Missouri and, uh, and Louisiana, and they've made a lot of great progress. Uh, so we pray for that. Pray that... Uh, because uh, this is federal, this is federal censorship. This is an overt uh, violation of our our constitutional rights, our God-given rights by the federal government, and they've been doing this. The rogue agencies have been doing this. They don't answer. They didn't respect or uh, acknowledge the authority of President Trump. So they, they plus these are these are hardcore leftists. These are atheists and uh, Marxist. Uh, totalitarian statists. They don't believe in our Constitution. So one of the shocking things that happened is, you know, hopefully soon. So a judge in, in Louisiana gave an order saying the FBI and all these other federal agencies have to immediately stop engaging in censorship. So they appealed. They appealed. And uh, the judge says only, you know, only if there's criminal content. You cannot censor Constitutionally, constitutionally protected speech. It's unconstitutional. But the, the FBI appealed, and uh, the judge of the higher court is allowing the FBI to continue to censor Christian, evangelical, conservative, biblical, pro-life uh, content. So when is this going to end? I hope, I hope soon. I hope that we restore freedom. So my ability to communicate the story of the life of St. Jude Thaddeus uh, is being hindered uh, by the FBI and by government censors. That's what's happening. Uh, and of course, it's happened to a lot of other conservative uh, content creators. So pray about this situation. Pray that free speech in America uh, will be restored. You know, 
I am running for office uh, in my in my district, and uh, people say, well, you know, Christians shouldn't be involved in politics; doesn't matter. Uh, but Jesus commanded us to preach, right? And if the government doesn't allow us to speak, hinders our ability to preach, teach, evangelize, and make disciples, especially when you have anti-Christian, atheistic, uh, Marxist, totalitarian status like we see in the FBI today, uh, where they're trampling on our constitutional rights. So uh, just pray that, that, that all these algorithms and systems of control and censorship are removed and that we can put out the message of St. Jude Thaddeus. I mean, if I was able to get my videos seen, I could have had the, uh, the movie out and available a long time ago. Uh, but now I've, I've been enduring a lot of hardship, and personal tragedies. Uh, but we have to continue to advance the kingdom of God and continue to preach and teach the message that was delivered to us by the apostles of Jesus Christ to continue their work. And that's what I'm going to do, and that's what I'm going to keep on doing. We're going to persevere, and I believe ultimately we'll have victory, and we'll have all this great content about St. Jude Thaddeus, about St. Thomas, available very, very soon. So please pray for me as I do this project, but also pray for freedom. Uh, so that we can have religious freedom, because that's, you know, first, it, it's connected. Freedom of speech and freedom of religion are connected. Um, how can you preach if, you know, you got the government's big boot on your throat crushing you, crushing, as the FBI is about now, sadly. Um, we also need to pray that these, these individuals who are doing this and these agencies be held accountable, that there's not only just reform, but, but heavy penalties on people who did this, uh, because we have a, a good news, we have a message of liberty, uh, redemption, forgiveness, salvation, eternal life that uh, we need to, to be preaching. Of course, this is a spiritual battle. Uh, these these are, are satanic forces in high places, sadly, in our government. I'm going to pray that they will be brought low. The gospel message will be exalted. That's what we're going to do. Jesus said, if I be lifted up on the cross, I will draw all men unto me. Satan's a defeated foe. So we're going to continue to advance the kingdom of God uh, in the face of persecution uh, obstacles, obstruction, and uh, if we persevere, we know that we shall ultimately triumph. So uh, thank you for your time, consideration, your prayers as we continue the work of the apostles. So thank you and God bless you.